Welcome to the In Story Show. I'm Devorah Spillman, your host, and today I am thrilled to welcome In Story expert Isabel Kiara. Hi, Isabel. Hi, Deborah. So, Wait, hold on, Devorah. Correct. I've been instructing <laughs> Isabel on my name, Devorah, which is the Hebrew pronunciation, which is why it's not the natural pronunciation for Westerners. So, Isabel is um, what she calls a life actualizer. She's a healer and an accountability coach. And today we're really going to dive into how do you go from a no to a yes? Like how do you get past obstacles and, and, and get to that place where no obstacle ever stops you? So before we dive in to all of that, Isabel, I want you to start us with your story, which is what I make everybody do, being a storyteller. Right. And tell us a little bit about what it was like in your world when you were a kid. Okay. So um, I just want to preface to say that my, my career has always been in the restaurant business. And um, I'm in a family business, which will explain why no shows up in my life. Um, I'm also a child of immigrant parents that um, were workaholics. From so where? That was, from, from where is the so from Italy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think the two most stubborn regions of Italy, I have to say, I love them, but it was, you know, when I meet people from that, those areas. Um, so uh, it's a little, uh, you know, people are very set in their ways. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, so when I was growing up um, and, you know, everything was a no. You know, can I go out and play? Can I go out and do this? And, you know, from an early age. Um, so in order probably to keep me safe or to help with chores or, you know, whatever. My mother was really great at uh, if I wanted to go out when I was, you know, when I got to be the age of 12 and I wanted to go out and play, I was doing spring cleaning like two seasons prior. So I was doing spring cleaning in the autumn and winter cleaning in the spring, you know, and I was always like a few seasons behind because I would get up, hurry up, do my work and like try to run out and play. But there was always like something else, you know, like bringing me back in. <laughs> so I heard no all the time. Right. So keep going with your story, Isabel. Where did, the, where did all this start to take you in your life? So... Um, so when I heard the word no, eventually I started to react and I started to be like, I couldn't hear it any longer. I couldn't hear them say no. So, and I had my sister who was like my little side cohort, you know, and I would be like, oh, we're so doing it anyway. So that would, so she would be like, what, what mom said no. And I was like, yeah, who cares? She always says no. She always says no. You know, and then she would threaten us with my father. So anyway, so I'm sure many people have that kind of upbringing. But me, I started becoming very uh, not in tune to hearing that word. I couldn't hear it anymore. You know what I mean? It wasn't, if somebody never says yes to you, then you, okay. And I feel like I was so curious as a child that I just wanted to try all these things and do all these things. So um, I was searching for a yes, basically, in my life. And um, so as I got older, you know, I was always, in, and I was always in trouble, which is fine because I became immune to that too, right? <laughs> I mean, like how much trouble could I be in? I'm already in the house. <laughs> I already can't go out and play. So what is the real punishment that I was getting, you know? Um, but, uh, um, but then, you know, I uh, started working in our family business and it's much harder to run a business when you're still constantly hearing that no, but it was like more serious, more a serious arena now, right? Because it was going to affect, you know, how we would, we're going to show up as a business. So we were in the restaurant business and um, I just finished, uh, I just graduated as um, a marketing major from college and uh, I, I went into our family business and I was actually going to do our marketing, but I was told that I couldn't spend any money. Like I couldn't spend money. And we had already had, we have, we had eight restaurants by this time. So I was like, Oh my God, you know, so it started to become a real conflict in our family. And I just 
was like, how am I going to do, like, how am I going to advertise us and, you know, look, uh, you know, like a professional company without even, we can't spend a dime. So um, I just, that for me was another, oh, really? No. I mean, I didn't hear that no again. So that was a constant, those were constantly, and I have to, I gave you a, um, there was a, a symbol, like if you ever saw John Travolta in Phenomenon, right? Every time someone said no to me, I was like that person that would come out of her, you know, what now? Oh, I'm going to figure it out. No matter what it takes, I'm going to figure out what it is that, um, how we're going to do it. So I started uh, talking to purveyors, you know, as I got to know people around our company, I started talking to some of our purveyors and they had a lot of uh, marketing dollars. And I said, so if I buy, and we were buying high volumes of stuff, I said, so if I buy this, you'll give me a certain amount of marketing dollars? And they were like, yeah, how come you don't know about it? And I was like, and so, you know, there's another thing I didn't, you know, I learned about, right? Um, everybody apparently knew about it but me, but they didn't use that money, right? So I started advertising um, and created like campaigns for us to, to, for our business to, you know, we've been in business for over 65 years. And I started um, taking care of, uh, you know, our advertising. And I think that part of the way that you're, if you already run a good operation and you're, um, moving forward in marketing yourself and shifting with the times, you kind of can stay in business on some level, right? So we're still, I'm still there. I still have my business, you know, and it's much easier now because I say yes to myself all the time if I want to do something. <laughs> no, that's a huge thing, Isabel, that you, I have, I, you know, as I listen to and as I know you since you're an in-story, you are a person who is able to say yes to things. It's so... Mm -hmm. It's a very cool part of you. I was like, oh yeah, that's how you've always been. <laughs> right. So it was interesting during that time too that, you know, when I started working and, you know, I had developed that same workaholic ethos in my system, I needed something. I, I said to myself and I can't, did one of those come to God moments and I said, oh my God, this cannot be it. I can't be working all these hours and have nothing else in my life. So um, I was walking down the street in Boston one day and I found um, a pamphlet on the floor, on the ground as I was walking and it had creative visualization uh, workshop on it. And I was like, oh my God, first of all, I don't even know why I picked up the paper because it was a rainy day, but I did. And I felt inside of me that I had to be there and I had to do it. Right. So for those of you who don't know, Shakti Gwan, one of the most powerful um, books she ever wrote and her process is called creative visualization. And I feel like that's part of how I lived my life. You know, I would be I would use her process to shift things and to change things in my business, in my life, using that process, which became like just secondhand nature to me. And as a result, I see for other people when I look at other people. I see their potential. I don't see them as they are sitting here answering me with their nose or their beliefs. I see what's possible for them. And part of the work that I do, which it touches my heart, because I mean, I, I have done it with all my employees. I, I always do it wherever I am, is to get a person to change their story about themselves or change their, their perception of themselves um, and create a bigger story for themselves. So actually being an in story also has um, helped me to really get to that ex more expanded part of myself too, because as maybe I see things as a higher potential for everybody else, sometimes when you're just with yourself, you don't see that great a potential. I mean, I feel like I have a great big container, but it's still, uh, it's not the potential for me, right? And that's part, you know, in your group, that's kind of the, you know, we get to see more, we get to expand our vision more and more. So that's just so powerful. And being in this group has been so powerful for me also. So right. and, I, and I bow to you. I bow to you. <laughs> Back at you, my dear. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but that I think is what's so amazing is that when we are in these groups of other inspired women who are really moving forward, it's like this, that thing you're talking about, that more possible becomes more possible. You know, and it's part of why I'm so passionate about inspiring my women to speak on my series like this, because I so know we have something to say and that what we have to say matters. And it's like what you're talking about, about saying yes to that bigger possibility. So, all right, so keep going, Isabel, and tell us a little bit more about, you know, like a little more of your story about how you have moved into really being a healer mm -hmm. and, you know, right. this growth for you keep right. going <laughs> you know it's so funny we always meant to do an interview together and here we are now three I months know. <laughs> an interview, right but thank you um but um so i couldn't live that life of just working all day long because you know my spirit was not it was fun but your spirit's not complete right so um after i found the um that pamphlet and I went to that class with Shakti Gwen and on creative visualization, I proceeded to, and I say like the universe opened up and inspired me and brought me to different areas. So I was, I embarked on this spiritual quest and started traveling, you know, there were to Nepal, I was in Peru, um, I was finding classes in my backyard, like two, two minutes away from my house on, you know, psychic development and anything that was more empowerment, but more about you and about, it felt more like a spiritual kind of uh, process for me. Um, so one of the things that happened, which was really interesting, is that um, I heard you know, this is how the universe opens up. So I heard, I was in a store and I heard this woman telling another woman how she was going to have this teacher at her house and she teaches psychic development and mediumship and uh, all of these spiritual uh, classes. And the girl that she was talking to wasn't even listening to her. Like she wasn't interested in it. Right. And I'm sitting behind them listening to it going, oh my God. Uh, oh my God, I, that sounds so good. So I said, excuse me, can I come to your class? And it was like down the road for me. And it was like this whole new, you know, embarkment of, you know, my spiritual journey. And it was like right in front of me, right? That I probably couldn't have seen it when, if I hadn't said to myself, oh my God, I got to do something else here. Right. And then for years, so I did that and it was the, one of the greatest pivot points in my life. And so I just began studying healing, different healing modalities and traveling. And, you know, I would use the techniques with my employees, some of my friends, you know, I would be dabbling, you know, nothing really serious, you know, I mean, always powerful, you know, but not, you know, like I would never say I was a healer. I would never acknowledge that at all. Um, and I kept myself very hidden because don't forget, we're talking about the eighties, right? That was like kind of a, no, no. <laughs> I just want to say, and you know, I started with the angels and the candles and stuff. And then people were like, oh my God, she's whacked out. But, um, but then it became the thing, right? It became everybody lights candles. Everybody, you know, um, believes in angels. So uh, it's, it was, it's funny how things evolve for me. And, um, but uh so in my business, I kept thinking I couldn't intertwine the two, right? And I learned, you know, like after about 10 years of studying all this stuff, I learned to integrate a lot of techniques and modalities within my business for me, including sales, bringing customers to, through the door, creating beautiful days, you know, in, you know that things worked out. Because, you know, you're in the restaurant business. There's so many problems every day. So I would create days and, you know, I had, we had eight restaurants. So I was like creating energetically like great days, great management, great everything. Employees walking through the door. We were in the midst of um, not having help at that time too. So I, I started working in that arena as, you know, and it started bringing healing into my business. I didn't ever said anything to anybody. I, of course I didn't. Um, but anyway, and it wasn't that long ago, 
I was, I'm still at this point, you know, like five or six years ago, trying to figure out what am I going to be when I grow up? And I got to this point, you know, where I was talking to this healer, a friend of mine, and um, I was like, I just still don't know what I'm going to do. Meanwhile, I'd been doing it, right? I had been doing it. And so she gave me a big no. She said to me, she goes, well, you were a healer in some of your other lifetimes, actually most of them, but this lifetime, you are not going to be one. <laughs> And my whole, you know, I got that no from her and I, my whole stomach like went, what? How dare you tell me what I'm not going to be in this lifetime and everything. And she goes, ah, now you know what you want to be because your guides, your spirit told me to say that to you. So you would know exactly what you were going to be and you were going to do in this lifetime. And then like everything changed for me, right? Do you see that was a setup? <laughs> totally, I love it. changed because I had to own it because I was so pissed off that I wasn't going to be that I had to. I owned that part of me. <laughs> it's so funny. I love that. Well, that's because that was like your nature. You, in order for you to go full out to something, you had to be fighting a no. <laughs> it's so funny. So, but now that's like this like genius skill of yours. Talk a little bit about what it's like when you have a client who says, "No, I can't do that." You know, I do that technique to, uh, I do that to people too. Um, I say, all right, yeah, you're not going to like the thing that they're, they're battling. They're, it's like most people are in a lot of the things that they want to be, right? <laughs> so if you take that away from them, then they realize, wow, that's really what they want to be, right? But you know, it's not that, it's not that easy. I can't just say, hey, you're not going to be that most of the time. Um, but I have done it a, couple, a few times and I said, okay, you know what, it's, you're not, because I work with a lot of healers also, right? I go, okay, yeah, you're, you know, you're not going to do healing this time. You know what you're going to do? And then I'll give them some like nine to five job type of deal. And they'll be like, what? And they freak out too. So <laughs> it does work because I go, you know, because then they have to, they own that part of them, you know? So it's kind of like walking in, um, that space with them. I like to work on a really deep DNA level, like their core, because they've already done a lot of therapy. They've already done a lot of, you know, analyzation. And so I like to go right to the core to really get to the feeling and the essence. And, and I work in that um, really kind of almost like a Delta state where they're really feeling, you know, what they're trying to create or they can, and they can even see it on a whole nother level. Um, so, that's, you know, how I really love to work, you know, with people. And I find it really profound. And I find that shifts really happen, you know, quickly. And you know, I don't have to struggle with a lot of beliefs. And even though, yes, you do have to, you know, work on beliefs and, you know, help eliminate beliefs. If they could see things a little clearer, those kind of move a little quicker you know, they kind of move out the door and doesn't serve them anymore. Mm -hmm. And people are really intrinsically not saying, you know, how you have power over yourself. And you're like, okay, I'm going to do this. They're not really doing that. They're right. Kind of moving into the space of what they're creating. Right. 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 That's more being in that flow, that allowing place. And yes. you know, there was one other thing I wanted to say that really struck me when you were speaking is that, you know, you were working successfully in your job you know, for those 10 years or whatever it was. And mm -hmm. it really struck me that I think this is important for a lot of people watching that you had this moment where you said, it's not, this is terrible, but this can't be all there is. Right. And there was more I, for me. Right. Like, I think that's what a lot of people bump into at different stages. And right. especially what I've seen is women who lived full lives and done things that are productive. It's like, there's still something more calling and your story is such a good example of how you felt that you were aware of it. And then you allowed yourself to say yes, as things started to show up. And that is something I really want people to take away from this interview with you is when things to show up, noticing if you're constantly resisting it and saying no, no, no to it. Because that ability to shift to saying yes, I think is super powerful. Um, mm. And I think that's part of what you're doing is you're helping people rewrite themselves into a new yes. 
Well, don't forget, I was in that, like, I'm looking for signs from the universe. So to me, anything that showed up was the, uh, oh my God, it's here for me. <laughs> you know, it wasn't an accident. I, I didn't believe that there were things put in my place to be, an, that were an accident. You right, know? A lot of people were never taught to think that way or to trust that. Right, it's part right. Of these interviews and all the stories and all of us supporting each other is to give yeah. us a new level of trust of that yeah. way of knowing because often the thing that gets shown up to you is is somebody else's no exactly yeah. right how you react to someone someone else's no right right so you reacted by like that's my yes your no is like yes you know, it's, a, like, a, 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 it's like it's like intertwined in my brain Right. But not everybody has that. And that's why I think we need each other. Right. Yes, because somebody sure. who's no, someone else might be living a life that, that a, a no is a no. Yes. And they accept sure. that and they embody that no. And that becomes that other person's no becomes their yes. Right. And so their container gets smaller and smaller. Right. So we yeah. have different, you know, we all have different stories that were our struggles. And then our gift is how you help the next person shift. So no one can be in Isabel's presence and not have her move you out of your no into your yes. Like right. you can't, there, you can't, you will not be able to. Um, <laughs> right. Saying that uh, no. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So Isabel, tell us a little bit about the free gift you created. So I created this um, gift that's called the Pyramid of Possibilities. And it's a, um, process and it's uh, a very deep process and um, it's very life-changing because in it you get to resolve issues that you have with either family members people things that aren't moving for you people that show up in your life that have said that you have a conflict with and you get to bring them into this pyramid of possibilities and work the relationship out with your higher self I mean, the, some of the results I've had is I do a lot with people and their, um, re, that have relationships with their husband and they're not communicating, um, they're not showing up, a lot of things that are going on with the, with the relationship. And um, at least I want to say immediately, the next day they're either speaking on a different level, right? Because you, you came to an agreement in this in this pyramid or this triangle between you and their higher self and you've agreed to this new walk that you're going to take with that person um so a lot of um problems that people have with their children they have a conversation with their children in this pyramid and i know it sounds really simple and it sounds really but you're really communicating on a whole nother level with them because you're not when you're in a relationship and it's just not working out you're not hearing the other person because you're standing there in kind of your righteousness on some level. But when you're talking from your higher self, there's a lot of other things that come into play. There's love, there's, um, you know, understanding, you're listening, you know, and it's a whole nother level of being and it's, it is at the level of your DNA. So it does shift in a profound way, um, the relationship between you and them so you could use it for anything i would use it for your boss you know you you want to raise like see if you could work it out on in this triangle <laughs> um or anything else that you're trying to create also before you walk into situations this is a great technique to um kind of integrate yourself with the room you know what I mean? Like you're going to walk into a big meeting. You can have a meeting before the meeting in your, in this triangle of everybody in the room and set your agenda already. And it's so powerful how the meeting will, will work, will kind of play out. Yeah. You know, because if you have a conflict walking into a meeting, that's really kind of what's going to play out. Right. right. No. And look, it's such a good, I encourage everyone get, click the link, get Isabel's free gift, do this process and you can do it a few times and then you can share any results or questions or anything you have in the Facebook group. And a lot of the work we're doing in this series is to really help you see how much you can do this work in this other plane, in this other realm. And everyone here is giving you access to that in different ways because it's, 
available to us now. And it's so powerful. You know, I've done this process with Isabel and it really shifted how I felt and the, the flow that I could feel. So it, it really is great. Um, so, so get, so get the, pro get that process from her and, um, and, and be kind of brave to dive in. Um, so Isabel, as we're coming kind of towards the end, maybe can you share a few last words of inspiration? <laughs> So, um, yeah, so if anyone's stuck in their life, you know, I would highly recommend um, just going into the imagination, which is something that you speak about quite a bit, and really open up your imagination to what's possible. And if you have words that you're saying or beliefs that you're talking about that aren't going to promote that inside of you or not going to support that, then really actually figure out what they are and find someone to to work with that are it's going to help you like dispel all those beliefs you have um i you know i would love to take people through that process and um and just you know it 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 hurts me to see someone living a smaller life than what's available to them it kind of it kind of makes me feel sad so you know, um, contact me, contact Deborah, and um, let her, let somebody know that you're struggling or that you're not living your full out life. 100%. And what you're going to get, so start by clicking the link and get the guided process. It's already made for you. And then you'll have a follow-up link if you want to talk to Isabel further. She'll have a free follow-up session for you. And then we'll all be available in the Facebook group because we really want you to come out of hiding. It's finally your turn and to dare to be seen. That's our theme. So no more staying stuck. <laughs> it's right. time to come out of hiding. So Isabel, thank you so much. I thank just you. love who you are, what you do in the world. It's inspiring. And, um, and it's really a message for everybody that you don't have to settle for less. Really. Right. You can say right. yes to whatever it is that's calling you forward. Right. And so, that's the work you also do in the work and it's so amazing and you touch so many people's hearts. It's very meaningful that we, when we do this and there is an opening in the world right now, like you were saying, like it's just more acceptable. It's more, or there's more of an opening. Right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As I say in farewell from all my shows is remember to go out in the world and share your story live your purpose and be a blessing. Bye folks. <laughs> Bye.